think we'll start once uh, Zainab. Uh, I think she will soon join me. Yeah, she will soon join us. We'll start shortly. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. I was trying to reply to your message you just posted on this Slack. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't let me go in that first time, but I'm glad I'm able to make it. No problem, there is no problem. Uh, yeah, the the slides that are already made they don't <laughs> correlate with the with the new edition of the book, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hard time understanding the concept. So hopefully you find about the chapter this morning. No, we can discuss using the actual book. If you are okay, it's still fine with all. We can discuss with the actual book. If you do prefer, we can this. Are you okay? Can we start the discussion? Yeah, we can start the discussion. Okay, so um, maybe you have to share your screen. Let me put start in the chats. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, I can see. I think you can. Uh, you can go ahead. I think the floor, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, so chapter thirteen is about um, building a plots on uh, layer by layer, uh, so you can make a more complex um, plots. Um, so, uh, I guess I. I like using visuals. Uh, you, uh, whenever I think about uh, ggplot layers, I just think of this graphic, um, how it starts from the data, the aesthetics, how you want to map um, the data. Like if you're making a scatter plot, you have like an X and Y. Um, well, they have an example. And then the 
recipes, so like a uh, geom point to make a scatter plot, um, geom bar to make a bar, et cetera, and um, so forth. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is the example that they give in the book. They always use the MPG um, data set. And so this is the basic layer of the base layer of, of it's just on um, the data layer where you just um, have the data set and the X and Y of the data set, but this doesn't have a geom to it. So that's why you just see the X and Y scales in the, because it's, it's mapped there. And then uh, it's the next point is basically you add another layer, which is the um, geometries layer, um, geom point here. And now you see that we have a, a, a scatter plot. Uh, I guess the, I guess this is called the, the layer function. Um, I guess it's like the most basic um, function um, that you can have in geom, uh, ggplot. Um, the layer function has all of the uh, mappings that you can use to create a plot. And uh, just feel free to interrupt me anytime if I'm if I'm saying something wrong or if, or anything like that. I, I appreciate the feedback. Um, all right. And so, like I said, mapping is how you want represented in, in the plot. Uh, usually, and most plots have X and Ys. Um, there are a few plots that only have like an X or Y. I think uh, I think the histogram only has an X um, mapping. And then the data, the data is just the data set that you're using. The genome is the shape that you want to create the plot. So um, genome point and genome bar, and there's others. And then stat, uh, stat is when you use like statistical transformations uh, to um, transform the data. So you can probably, if you have a data set and you wanna just map like the means or, or the counts of of the data, um, that's when you use that. And position, um, position is mostly used for bar bar plots. Uh, this is uh, explained later in the chapter, uh, so I won't go into details with that uh, right now. So let's see, yeah. So the first, the most important uh, thing that you can uh, use in Jujo Jujo plot function is is the data function. So without the data function, you can't plot. And so these are multiple different uh, data set. <laughs> I love using the layer function. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, we could probably talk about it uh, later, but I'm just wondering how you use it. Is it you like using it because you can customize it more or is it just like less to, to memorize? I'm, I'm pretty interested of, of why you like the layer function. Um, okay, so this is one that's called mod uh, losses. Uh, this is a grid and I guess this is a prediction. So this is, I'm assuming uh, this is a, I don't know what you call those, um, a regression, a regression line. I'm not, not really sure. Uh, but we have different data sets. Um, and then this one, uh, we're getting the outliers of Um, yeah, and so we're in a line plot that's, uh, in this case, it just uses the, well, it uses
Oh, sorry, I got disconnected for a second. For a second. No, no problem. No <laughs> problem. Get... Yes, I can hear you. Uh, so it uses all three data sets. So first one. You need is, to uh, share your screen again. Layer. We can't um, see your screen. Oh, okay. Um, is that better? Yes, it's coming. It's coming up now. Can you see it now? Uh, man. Yes, yes, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. All right. I'll I'll just keep on going. Uh so yeah, this uh Multiplot using um, geo point is use it uses all three data sets that are up here, and so the first is the base layer ggplot. That's why you see uh, it's map the static mappings um, display uh, is the x axis um, h y h w y is the y axis. So this is why you have this grid, and then we are adding points to um, this is static mapping. And so for GM line, we're using the data set grid and the static is gonna be the color blue. And we're setting the line width to 1.5. And then the geo text is the outlier um, data set that we got here. And we're just labeling it, labeling um, the outlines here. So uh, it's kind of uh, long-winded. I, I like this version better. It's a lot easier to read. Um, so yeah, and then they have um, exercises to go um, with, with this. So I'm just going to keep on going. And so aesthetic mappings are uh, mappings that uh, you pair the actual data set with the visuals of the map. Um, you use the AES function um, inside of ggplot function that uh, plots. So it's usually, in this case, the X is the display, and the Y is HWY, and the color is class um, of the, amp and this is of a PG um, data set. Um, usually, uh, it's always implied that the first, um, two, depending on the aesthetic, the first um, parameters are usually X. That's why you don't have to explicitly say them um, here. And so, uh, so I guess you can uh, specify specific aesthetics based on uh, the layers of the plot. Um, so yeah, so it looks like we have all of these are scatter, scatter plots and um, yeah, that, have different aesthetics. Um, yeah, I always get confused. What is the difference between using the aesthetics in the aesthetics function and then using the aesthetics in the geom late? Um, just a difference, but I'm, I'm not really sure. I think if you use the aesthetics, um, and the ggplot function, it gets uh, inherited right by the other by the other um, genomes. If you decide to use multiple genomes, or is there something different? The line, 
is breaking. I cannot hear you clearly. Oh, okay. Oh. If I can hear you, it's trying to compare the two plots in terms of the the how they apply the aesthetics. Is that what am I correct? Hello. Uh yeah, I'm still here. I was just trying to um delete um some extra tabs. Is that better? Yes, yes, it's better. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering what is the difference between you the aesthetics function instead of ggplot instead of the the, the geom layer. Okay. Uh the difference there is that the first plot there we are within the the ggplot2 function, we are passing in the data. We are also doing the aesthetic mapping for both X, the Y, and also we are passing in the color. Mm -hmm. Then for the second function, if I get there, they are still doing the aesthetics, but within the geometry, they are still passing in another aesthetics, which is going to be for the color, which is equals to class. And if you check the plot, I think we are still going to get uh, the same outputs. Just like ggplot2, uh, you know, we have different layers, uh, they, but the ordering of things really matters. But in this same plot, the two plots, will still, we are still going to get the same outputs. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's see. All right, so uh, yeah, so we kind of got two different. So this is the where the no, this is where they used the aesthetics inside of the. I think you need. Yeah, I don't know why I keep. I'm sorry about that. There's no problem. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so the one on the left, the aesthetic is being mapped in the ggplot function. And this one, the aesthetic is being plot in the in the geom function. So uh, you have this, oh wait, okay, I think I get it. So the one, so if you um, put the aesthetic in the ggplot function, um, both geoms are going to inherit um, this aesthetic because that's why you have both the points colored by the class and then you have lines colored by the class. And so if you put the aesthetics um, inside of the geom, that geom will only have that aesthetic. And so that's why this line is just solid purple. So, okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, thanks, uh, Vemi. Okay. And then this goes over um, setting and mapping aesthetics. And so what I got from this chapter is that um, mapping aesthetics, uh, you are using the actual variables from this data set uh, to create uh, different 
parameters. So like in this case, above the previous case, we're using um, class to color um, the, the scatter plot. But if we decided to set it, so if we, if we did color equals blue, then the the points will turn blue. And um, yeah, that's that's what they did over here. Um, yeah, to set is just to set it to a, 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 a specific um, color or a specific number depending on the parameter that you're using. So yeah. Um, so the first um, example, um, they set the color to dark blue. Um, this one, uh, it's a little bit tricky because uh, it just seems like you're just setting the legend to dark blue, but it doesn't, it just doesn't um, understand that it should be dark blue. It's, it just goes to like a default color. Um, I don't know how, where you were used this example. Um, I don't, I don't see why this is useful. It seems like a bug, but I think it's useful. Have you ever used, used no, it? It's not, it's not a bug. It's not an issue of a bug. What mm -hmm. is going on at, under the hood is that after ggplot2 will scale the data down, then it will now look at all those columns in the MPG data sets. Uh, it will now check, do we have any, any column that is named uh, dark blue? Then ggplot2 cannot find any column that is named uh, dark blue. So it's, it's just going to steal everything down, give it a random color, a reddish color. Um, it's going to give it a legend that anytime you see this color, know that color is equals to uh, dark blue. But if you go down in the next line, there is another function in which they use, they were able to override this by using scale color identity, which is going to apply the default color that we are trying to pass. If you scroll down, okay. it's just down the next point, you see scale color identity, which will now pass in which it will now override the color is equals to dark blue. It's going to implement that color in the plot. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so is this useful to map aesthetics to constants? Okay. Uh, for example, if you want to display multiple layers with varying parameters. So it looks like it's given it both uh, it's assigning a random color or a default color, but it's giving it a legend so you can differentiate between the two um, lines in this plot. So, okay, I guess that's one use case um, to use it. Um, okay. And then genomes, uh, there's a lot of different genomes uh, in ggplot. Uh, I didn't know that it was so many. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more because there's a lot of packages out there. Um, yeah, so yeah, this chapter didn't really um, say too much. So I was just showing you like the different plots, uh, genome points or genome shapes that you can use to, to make a plot. Uh, I guess this is an area chart. This is a line, a hex, and um, et cetera. Um, stats, uh, I don't have too much familiarity with the, the stat function um, in ggplot, but it seems to be um, useful. I know uh, in geohistogram, uh, the stat is like default. Um, so I'm assuming uh, geom bar, geom free po po um, poly, and geo histogram uses the function stat bin. Uh, there's stat smooth. 
Um, there's also Stat Quartel. Um, I'm assuming uh, Stat Qu Quartel is also used in the box plots. Um, and then there's Stat Summary. I think it's frequently used with um, GeoBar um, as well. So um, this is this is an example of using Stat Summary. Uh, so we're using the MPG um, data set again, and the axis, the trans, and the uh, CTY is the Y axis. And so uh, we want to use uh, the point points um, to map the mean, and we want to set the aesthetic to red and the size to red. And so this is the mean of each um, different trans. And then I think this is the same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is essentially the same thing as the one above it, uh, but it's using um, geo point um, twice. So. I, I guess I like this one a little bit more because it's a little bit less confusing. And then, um, yeah, generated variables. Uh, this is usually when it comes to like histograms or even bar charts. Um, there's um, stat bin, uh, there's count, there's density, and then there's the center of the bin. And so here are examples of um, using the GM histogram um, function. Uh, I'm not really sure what's the difference between this and this, like the after stat density. I think it's just a different way that they calculate the, the histogram, but it, it's like similar. Um, Okay, I think in that code, if you check the second code, means that before the then after the statistic car layer has been computed in ggplot2, because all this computation is going on in the background. That is when after start, then okay. can you perform the density function? Okay. Yeah, because it's giving two different results, so. And then uh, finally, it's the last section in this chapter is the position adjustments. And it's um, mostly used for um, bar charts and his, yeah, mostly used for bar charts. Uh, so the default for GM bar is a stacked um, position. Uh, it's like one of the most frustrating things <laughs> I, I for ggplot for me is because I didn't know that you had to use, um, when I was first learning ggplot, I didn't know you had to use the position dash in order to make a uh, side-by-side uh, bar, bar chart like this. Uh, so it was many nights of stack overflow to, to figure that out. And then uh, geom fill, uh, they, it's the same, similar to stacked, but they are um, scaling everything to one. So uh, it's similar, but a, a little bit different. Uh, position identity, uh, I think, I, th I think the position identity is you just, um, just map the, the X. Um, yeah, you just math the math. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, you just math the um, the value of the data. So let's say you have a data set like four, six, eight, ten. I think when you use position identity, it's just going to scale um, the bar to the actual numbers. So um, yeah. So here's an example of. I'm using 
um, GM bar with position identity with that. And then uh, these three functions, position nudge, position jitter, and position jitter, jitter dodge, that's mostly used for points, GM points. And so jitter is just like kind of, um, it's just the positioning. And um, instead of having like overlapping points, you kind of just uh, push your points uh, a little bit away from each other. Uh, so you can see like um, more points onto you on the graph. So it's just a way to offset the, the points on the graph. And um, yeah, that's that's it for this chapter. Um, thanks for answering all my questions and um, letting me present. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you very much also for presenting uh, the chapter. So if I should check the sign up sheet for what we have next week, if I check. What do we have to discuss next week? Yep. But no, thank you very much for that presentation. Oh, yeah. Thank you for listening, um, um, Baba Tunde. Welcome. Okay, so if I check next week, I think uh, we are having going to be discussing, I think, chapter chapter. 15. It's like even the ordering of the book, there is a mix up somewhere because we are looking at mastering the grammar, which is supposed to be 13, I think so. Then build a plot layer by layer was, I think, 14. But there is no problem. I think we'll sort that out with John. So we'll start, we'll discuss chapter 15 uh, by next week. So, which is scales. So let me stop the, the recording. <laughs>